What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overlord here. So we have a lot to talk about regarding Screen 5 so I'm just going to jump right on into it. So you see here from the official Screen Twitter page that they tweeted out a behind the scenes image with the caption there were only a few drops of blood to clean up on set. Official sources stated this is false and misleading. Now but judging from that tweet we can already expect to have a high body count in the upcoming Screen 5, the upcoming Screen relaunch from Paramount and Spyglass Media. Now how many people exactly will die? Of course, I do not know. You do not know. We can, of course, just theorize how many. I'll just throw out a random number, maybe seven deaths total. But ultimately, there's at least two characters that we can, of course, maybe even four or six, maybe, maybe five. <laughs> there's at least two characters from this supporting cast that I know for a fact we can write off as potential people that could die. So already off the bat, Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega I do not think they will die, and I know a lot of you will not don't think they're going to die either for very good reason. From the start, we've known the tidbit that a young woman returns to her hometown to investigate a series of vicious crimes. And just from that, we know that things aren't going to be circulating around Sydney Prescott as much this time. And over the months as production neared and we found out other things, and these audition tapes came out, it became clear that the characters we would be centering on are... Sam and Tara Carpenter who are portrayed by Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega Sam seems to be fitting that mold of that young woman returning to her hometown as we see from behind the scenes images she has a boyfriend named Richie who we know is played by Jack Quaid and they seem to be returning to Woodsboro after something goes down regarding Tara who's played by Jenna Ortega and another thing I want to talk about regarding that is that we know that this working title for this film was Parkside Alpha. Maybe Parkside Alpha is the town that Melissa's character stays in with her boyfriend, Richie. And maybe that's also where Sidney Prescott stays now outside of Woodsboro. Speaking of Sidney Prescott, Nev Campbell and the cast of Screen 5 actually did appear recently at a convention in Brazil, a recent film convention in Brazil. It was a surprise. She appeared on screen, talked about the upcoming project. They just finished filming. She teased that we should expect the roles to be reversed this time what that exactly means i do not know 100 percent. i kind of have a hunch and i hope i'm correct on what i think she means by that by the roles being reversed basically what it comes down to of course what the little tidbits we know when she says the roles are reversed i think that's her kind of slightly confirming yeah i'm going to be taking the back seat as far as like the number one victim this time around i'm just going to be here still a part of it but i'm not going to be the focal i think that's what she might be hinting at because we know it's going back to the carpenter sisters and all of that and then the cast of the film the supporting cast the new cast they appeared on the stairs and what looks to be Stu mocker's house they all look great sonia struck me out or struck me as odd not only because she's just very pretty but but because she's the only one who has ghost face on her shirt someone else pointed out they saw someone else but all i saw was sonia and that might just have to do with the fact that i was just instantly looking for sonia when this image was released but that's just me um, I also think Sonya is going to be one of the ghost faces. I think she'll be one of the partners involved with someone who I think is still going to be revealed. I think somehow we'll still get Stu Mocker's little brother. You guys know I made a video about that regarding Judy Hicks and Stu Mocker's brother. Judy Hicks, not so much confident in her anymore. I'm still confident in the, in the Stu Mocker little brother theory, though. I think Stu Mocker's brother will play a factor in this, and I cannot wait to see it if it comes true. I know a lot of you will run to me to tell me, hey, I was partially right, but... Hopefully, Stu Mocker's brother is the main villain in Screen 5. Those are my hopes. And I think Sonya's character will be a factor in it. Those are my hopes, too. I think it's time we got two female ghost faces. Because uh, I think another female should be a partner involved. So, first time we have three ghost faces. One male, two female. That's what I would like to see. Jumping into something regarding the trio. Now, Michael Kennedy, who is the co-writer of Freaky the recent film from Blumhouse and Universal Pictures in the same universe as Happy Death Day. We know that was a big hit amongst us horror fans. Um, it would have been a bigger hit had we not been living in the crisis that we're living in, of course. But Michael Kennedy sat down with Homophilia the, uh, recently on their podcast. Yes, that's the name of the podcast, I believe, Homophilia. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. You go to the 16-minute mark on the episode he was recently on. They started off asking him at that point about his all-time like favorite horror films he named the exorcist then he went on to talk about scream 2 and his love for scream 2 and how it kind of just captures the 90s in a bottle anime in a way then he went on to talk about how he can't wait for scream 5 and then that's when they say oh what are your hopes for scream 5 and he let it be known that he actually got to read the script he thinks the script is fantastic 
He thinks that we're gonna love the new characters that they have to offer. And he thinks that this is the best use of the trio since Scream 2. What exactly he means by that, again, don't know. All I can do is speculate the same way you guys will. My personal opinion, I just think he means that in this film, since we know Sidney Prescott, we kind of be taking a back seat. Uh, I think all he means is that their, their factor in the narrative doesn't feel unnatural. They still feel very important. They still feel like they belong here, despite the fact that the narrative is shifting away from Sidney Prescott's life and her being the focal of it. Um, I feel like that's honestly what he means. And I think he's just saying that the chemistry between them is some of the best we've ever seen since Scream 2. And quite possibly that how they're utilized is done in a very effective manner to not only honor what they've contributed for the past four sequels and this new entry, past four films rather, and this new entry, but they do it in a manner that honors that and they get to pass the torch to these new characters in a way that will make fans of the franchise and new fans very satisfied and will be more welcoming to watching this series grow beyond these three characters i think that's what he means honestly and i think it's i won't i won't say it's it's necessarily time to let go of those three characters honestly i was satisfied with scream being the trilogy i know a lot of other people were because we grew up with the trilogy i grew up with scream one two and three scream was just always a trilogy to me for like 12 years of my life it was always just a trilogy uh for at least a solid decade of my life it was always a trilogy scream scream 2 scream 3 blockbuster every other friday that's what was on my tv then we got scream 4 now we're getting screen 5 we grew up with these characters and i think what he's saying is that this is done in a manner the way they're used is going to be something that we could be pleased with as we pass the torch because i think they're going to be out of the factor going forward and what i mean by that is i could see this being the last time we see dewey riley last time we see Courtney Cox, Nev, not Nev Campbell, the last time we see Courtney Cox is Gail Weathers, but Nev Campbell, Sydney Prescott, we know she's like the lifeline of the franchise. This could be the last time we see her this time, but if we get to do Scream 6, Scream 7, I feel like what they'll do is they'll treat her like Nancy Thompson from Nightmare on Elm Street. They'll bring her back as we get to the final film. And I know a lot of people want that to be Scream 6, I wanted to be Scream 6 too. I think they're going to go beyond that because I, they already wanted to have Samara weaving in this film. They're going to try to have Samara weaving in Scream 6 and probably have her in Scream 7. If we don't end at Scream 6, I would want us to end at Scream 7, but I know a lot of people don't even want to end on an odd number. You might want to end at Scream 8 for those people that are weird like that. <laughs> I'd be fine with just ending at 6 or 7. 8 is fine too. Honestly, I'd be satisfied with just 6, but... I think we're going to be passing the torch. Sidney Prescott will probably not reappear in this franchise again until we get to the actual final, final, final film definitively that we get to see in this in this franchise. That's when the next time we'll see Nev Campbell. I think they're done after this. I think Sidney will still be around. It should be the most important since she was the, the previous lifeline and we're going to pass it to the Carpenter sisters and their drama now. But I think that's what he meant by it. I think he's just trying to say that they're going to be done they're going to be utilized in a way that pays respect to what they've already contributed while also effectively letting you know that, hey, we've done our part. Now it's time for you guys to settle down with this new this new group of characters and this new family with the Carpenter sisters. So that's my honest opinion on that. I think his words will reign true. He thinks the script is fantastic, so I can't wait to see everything that goes into this film. I know a lot of you can not either. But let me know what you guys think about all that down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and never miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.